What's up guys, back in today with another reaction to Mushoku Tensei, this time with episode 9 of season 2. Looking forward to today we met Baggy, ba Baddy Gaddy, Baggy Daggy <laughs> last episode. Uh, I can't quite remember how you say it, but he was a hell of a character. Uh, looking forward to seeing him now, he's joined as a kind of transfer student of sorts. So um, again, hopefully plenty of fun moments with him coming uh, for today's episode. Did see some preview images of a new girl introduced. I think it might be the blue haired girl we did see a uh, little glimpse of last episode. So looking forward to seeing what she is up to. Uh, we had a nice little segment with Cliff at the start of the episode and Ellen and Lisa as well. I'm also looking forward to seeing how their relationship has uh, evolved through um, the span of last episode to this one but do let me know what you guys think of this episode down in the comment section leave a like on the video if you guys did like and subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date with these weekly reactions and let's get right into the episode is this not last episode am i Have I got the right episode? I think so. I think this is the right episode. This is quite a familiar. Sorry, <laughs> they were taken back. It kind of feels like the set. The I think actually the other girl was in the last scene, wasn't she? The other cat girl. But oh, this is really similar. Apologies about that. I actually made the same mistake a couple of days ago with an anime I was watching. Where I clicked the episode before. Um. I feel like this is very familiar. Okay. <laughs> I think he has an affinity to all types of women, honestly. Maybe a more quiet, down to earth, kind of um, shy girl like Sylphie. Might be a good change of pace from the, the strong, kind of loud, super energetic type. I think that's fair enough. Yeah, let her do what she pleases. I can very much understand her worry. Um, she's got it wrong, of course. We would hope to think that she's got it wrong. She definitely has. But, um, obviously, for her point of view, it's not certain. Especially as she's took on a new, um, what do you call it? Kind of persona, I guess as well there's a gadu do 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 Crazy that we've only got a couple weeks left, isn't it? Luckily, a second call. How long was it between the first season and this one? I feel like it was about a year and a half or two years. So hopefully that it will be the. Hopefully it'll be a shorter wait. I'm not counting on that, but um, hopefully it'll be the same kind of length of time between seasons. I think the original source material was ongoing for quite a while before the anime aired so and there is a lot to adapt hopefully i can't really get i really can't get enough of this if you know what i'm saying it'll be a sad day when it ends but hopefully it's very long running
and back at our usual spot. Silent seven star. Wow. But the outrageous name. So this. Okay, so this is that seven star. We're going to see this shot in the preview. This episode. So it's not the blue haired car that we did see last episode actually. It's a different girl. What again begs the question, why was there just a random shot last episode with a girl with blue hair just doing nothing? There must be some significance. Do you know this girl? I don't recognise her. Oh shit! Is she the girl that was with um, the dragon guy? I forget his name. Orsted. The Asian girl. Oh shit, I remember now. Holy crap. I remember now. Holy crap. I didn't, re didn't realise till now. <laughs> Holy shit. It's, the, it's one of Orsted's friends. Or someone that was with him at the very least. That was quite the reaction from Rudy, understandably so. That's Sophie. Why is she speaking in that language? <laughs> that was pretty ominous. Well, that is Japanese. So is that his human name written down there? Do you think then? Oh no, I do forget his human name. Indeed. So she has. So she's been reincarnated as well. Okay. I think that was that did pop up as a question, didn't it? We met Orsted. 
Wait, we actually know this girl. Anahosh. Nihon Jinya. And we're back to speaking in Japanese. Or normal language. Sorry, just to clear myself up, honestly. I think they're actually just speaking in the same language they were maybe speaking in before. I forget how it works, honestly. We did again. It's been a while since I did watch season one. Of course, I don't even remember Nana Hoshi, <laughs> Nana Yoshi, or Nana Hoshi. I forget what her name was, but um, I didn't even recognize her. Obviously, as soon as uh, as soon as Rudy's reaction that really kind of reawakened me to the trauma as well. Um, but I think they were speaking in the language they always kind of speak in, but it's just turned to Japanese because obviously voice actors and stuff aren't just going to speak in this made up language of the whole show. I don't think. Um, so I think now it was just a kind of subtle translation back into Japanese. But again, I think it did come up as a question that this girl, being that she did have a Japanese name during the Orsted meeting, um, that she might have been reincarnated as well. And that is now confirmed. So I wonder how that will be explored going forward. That's something you don't, don't actually really see all that too much in a Sekai's. The actual kind of part in between the reincarnation. And what happens there? What actually happened? Mad they actually recognised her. Like there must have been some kind of crazy. Maybe it's got something to do with the cataclysms. I don't know. But it's too, way too much of a coincidence that they live so close, or at least were near each other. And both of these people have been reincarnated. It seems like she's much more still who she was, whereas Rudius is, was very much on a journey to change. I think that's quite evident here as well, isn't it? Like, I wonder if, um, oh, so I, I was totally wrong about the language stuff. <laughs> Turns out they were actually speaking Japanese, but I think, like I said, usually they do just put it in Japanese so the Japanese audience can understand it. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, it's not that big an issue. We can, we can understand what's being said. But yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if um, she'd be wanting to work with him and such if she did know who he was before as a human in the human world. Pretty crazy person to get adopted by.
Yeah, I think we did hear about them, didn't we? Early on. I kind of thought that would be the case. Hmm. They specifically said not to mention them. Interesting. True. What the fuck? Is that actually true? Quite scary. Oh, intriguing. There are some slight differences between these two. Oh, you say that. Yeah, some slight differences that actually like little cracks that cause a major change in their existence here, I guess. There you go. <laughs> true, all true. There's plenty of reasons to love this place as well, though, I think. As much as a lot of bad stuff's happened. The people here are great, the settings. Again, yeah, there's a lot wrong with it, but there's a lot wrong with most places. You very much understand why she wants to go back, definitely. Yeah, what does she want from him? Yeah, I think Fitz is just sitting there just not understanding any of this. <laughs> oh, they're speaking in human Japanese right now. Kind of feel a bit bad for her back there. Or is really worried? And yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier. The seamless kind of transition 
back to the language that fits with speaking, but it's just in Japanese. So we can understand. A clash of war. I can't, like I said, I kind of have a feeling it's linked with teleportations or something. Yeah. I don't know. Fucking hell. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fuck now, that was quite the that was quite the response there from Fitz. Fuck me, that's the most. I'm not sure if I said that's the most emotional, but that is it's a powerful, powerful I've seen Fitz. Jesus Christ, understandable, of course. That, like this has ruined so many lives, <laughs> put so many people through so much. Wow, that was a scene and a half right there. Oof, a bit on edge <laughs> after that. Yeah. We've been for a lot today. <laughs> Fucking hell. Nana Hoshi. Nana Yoshi. Quite the meeting. My god. And lots of questions brought up. Lots of long running mystery. And it seems we might step. <laughs> No pun intended here, but might step closer towards to go on. That was really cute from Sylvie right there. Subtle. Yeah, I I slightly agree with that. Some I wouldn't say I don't I don't like her, but something about her does rub me a little bit weird as well. Like I don't know, I, I haven't fully kind of like I don't fully like her. I don't dislike her either. Though. We only just met well, we met her earlier, but we only just really met her then. But wow, that was quick. <laughs> A lot did happen, to be fair. <laughs> a lot happened. Funny, because nothing really happened. It was just talking. But a lot happened. That was a great episode. Nana Yoshi. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I think there's a... They both obviously came here from the human world, but there seems to be slight differences. She might have been summoned via teleportation, and Rudy more of a... Uh, well, what's it? I want to say organic way, but I feel like that's definitely not the right saying. 
But it'll be interesting exploring the differences between their kind of existence here. Trying to understand that. Like I said, not too many Isek guys actually do that. A lot of them just kind of very much gloss over that stuff. Like, yeah, fuck, fuck all the ins and outs of that. This person is in this new world and you're just going to be seeing them now. But it actually is interesting comparing a person born into the world and wants to be a part of it and wants a new chance of life compared to a person that was sent here and didn't really want to go here, didn't need a new chance, wants to actually go back to their old life and their old world. I think that's going to be really awesome to see. Did it mention how Nana Yoshi caused it? Because I, I don't think I caught it if, if it did. I will just rewind back to that quickly. Might have missed a subtitle or something. These feelings. Obviously she explained that she did cause it, but again, I'm not sure if she actually explained how. And if she did, I did miss it. This episode really was just this whole meeting, wasn't it? Quite crazy. Oh, it felt so fast as well. Usually very dialogue heavy episodes take feel like they take a bit longer. Not in this show though. Somehow. I love this part. She doesn't know how it happened. And it was when she arrived here. So yeah, like, I, I did. I, I was thinking this teleportation seems like it takes so it probably takes so much magic and such that it's, it's almost like I think back to Full Metal Alchemist. There's there's the outcome, and then there's what you put into that. There's you get the mass tele, you get the teleportation of Nana Yoshi here, and to pay for that, the equivalent exchange would be a mass disaster somewhere in this universe. Um, wow. I did kind of miss that bit there. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, hell of an episode today. <laughs> hell of an episode. One of my, one of the, my favourites of this season, for sure. Uh, again, just a full episode of just talking um, to people from the human world, which is quite the uh, quite the occurrence in of itself that they're actually talking here and they kind of recognise each other from the... Uh, the well, at least uh, Rudy recognises her a little bit from the human world. Um, again, there might be something going on in that. Maybe it's like fixed on a certain part of Japan or something that wherever the kind of equivalent exchange sort of kind of stuff comes from. Again, I'm, uh, there's plenty of mystery still here. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of these two's relationship in the future. I love this bit from Fitz there as well. Her reaction to uh, the what caused the great cataclysm. Um, that was really emotionally charged, wasn't it? Like I said, probably maybe the most we've seen out of her kind of letting loose that no shell at all she really came out and <laughs> guns blazing absolutely loved that from her and again totally understandable what that great cataclysm did cause but just a really intriguing episode today um again probably a few things i did miss so if i uh, if you can help me down in the comment section that would be really awesome uh do leave a like on the video if you guys did like and subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date with these weekly reactions i'll be back next time with episode 10 so see you guys next week enjoy the rest of your day guys